Welcome to part one of the MSP 432 training. This section is the MSP 432 overview. MSP 432 is part of the low power and performance MCUs. This is within MSP's portfolio of ultra low power MCUs including our FRAM products and security and communication MCUs including our RF 430 products. What kinds of problems are customers looking to solve? Many times we see customers looking for increased processing capability. They want to add more capability into their device or throughput or analog performance or perhaps they're standardizing on ARM. They also want low power operation, especially when they're battery powered or needing to draw just a minimal amount of line power. They want the tools and software to be easy to use and to help them optimize their performance and also their power. And they want a scalable portfolio that allows them to move between low power and high performance products. MSP 432 solves these problems with a 32-bit 48 megahertz Cortex-M4F processor which gives you more performance, in fact twice the performance of an M3 at half the power. Low power operation is part of MSP's DNA. We've designed this device to be the lowest power general purpose Cortex-M device with only 95 microamps per megahertz of active power and 850 nanoamps in standby, including RTC. We want users to be able to take advantage of the MSP430 toolchain as well as the ARM toolchain, which allow you to optimize for high performance and for low power. And now users can choose between 16-bit products and 32-bit products, all that have seamless portability. Since performance is a key goal of MSP432, it was important that we selected the highest performance Cortex-M device. Cortex-M4F includes access to the full ARM instruction set, as well as DSP extensions and a floating point engine. At the same time, it was important that we incorporate high performance peripherals and features into the device. For example, we included the driver library in ROM. You can access ROM faster than you would if driver library was in Flash. Also, the Flash has two independent banks, which allow you to simultaneously read and write, which saves time. The analog is our fastest yet, one mega sample per second, 14-bit ADC. This allows you to sample data faster. To elaborate on the Cortex-M4F ARM instruction sets, you'll see that Cortex-M4F includes the full ARM instruction set compared to M4 or M3 or M0+. This allows you to perform your operations more efficiently. You'll also see that a Cortex-M4F can process fixed point operations twice as fast as an M3 and over 10 times faster for floating point operations than an M3. When it comes to low power operation, first we wanted to optimize the silicon for low power. We included capabilities like a wide voltage range. MSP432 can run at 1.62 volts. This includes the full speed as well as flash access. We've also integrated a DC to DC that allows you to be more efficient while operating at speeds over 24 megahertz. The flash buffer and DMA helps you to minimize the CPU cycles. At the same time as having low power silicon, we wanted to provide low power tools and software. The driver library in ROM also consumes less power than if driver library was running out of flash. Tools like ULP Advisor and Energy Trace Plus allow you to optimize your code so that you're not consuming extra power where it's unneeded. EMBC, the maker of CoreMark, has created a new benchmark called ULP Bench, designed to measure ultra-low power across different microcontrollers. You can see here that MSP430 truly does have the best ULP Bench score, which shows that our power operation is the most efficient. Here, the higher the number, the lower the power. MSP432 offers tools like Energy Trace Plus that allows you to see in real time the power consumption of your entire device. You can measure current or track your CPU states to identify where you might have power black holes. To take a look closer at the device, you'll see here in orange the peripherals that are the same as in MSP430. This is important for MSP users who want to migrate their code from their 16-bit device to the new 32-bit core. The items shown here are typical components of an MSP430 user hardware, software, development tools, and development kits. Now if we look at MSP432, which pieces port seamlessly? All the items in red that have moved down to MSP432 are the same as in MSP430. You'll notice the only thing that didn't port is the core. That's because we have a new 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4F core. 
Now there are some components that are new to MSP 432, new 432 modules and R modules, which will come with new software. You can program using register level style software or use driver library. ARM users have the opportunity to take advantage of CMSYS style coding. And we have new IDEs available like Kyle. MSPWare is your one-stop shop for all of the technical collateral you're going to need. You can see here that the user's guides and data sheets, training, app notes, and code examples are all contained within MSPWare. This is the best place to start your evaluation and your code development. Users can take advantage of the MSP432 Launchpad which is an all-in-one tool for only $12.99, which includes the emulator, as well as push buttons and LEDs, and, and connects to your PC via USB. This is a great way to evaluate MSP432 by trying out the demo code and the out-of-box GUI, as well as get started with your own software development. MSP432 comes in six different flavors. Devices with an R have 256K of flash and 64K of RAM, while devices with an M have 128K of flash and 32K of RAM. You'll see that there's three different package options depending on what works best for your application. The smallest being the 5x5 BGA, there's also a 64QFN, and then a 100LQFP. This concludes part one of the MSP432 training. Thank you.